If you've ever been knocked offline by some kid in a video game claiming to be the world's most dangerous hacker, well, then you need this video because I'm about to help you out. Nico knows tech. All your tech tips and reviews on deck. Nico knows tech. Number one channel with the news on a DDoS, or a direct denial of service attack, is a malicious attack intended to deprive service of the victim. These are normally targeted at corporations and websites and major services for the purpose of extortion. However, individuals can do this and make a victim of you if you're vulnerable. This video is sponsored by VIPCDKDeals.com, who I use for all of my licensing needs. Right now you can get incredible deals on products such as Windows 10, Windows 11, Office, or even game titles. And if you use coupon code NK25 during this holiday season, you'll get an extra 35% off your purchase. That means you get a genuine license for Windows 10 Professional for just $13. Treat yourself this holiday season to the same prices that I get by following the link in description and use coupon code NK25 to get an incredible 35% off. Happy Holidays! Now, despite what you may have heard, if you're a home user using a Windows computer or a Mac computer, Linux, your computer is not the likely culprit that is vulnerable to a DDoS. It's most likely your router. Now, a router is technically a little computer with its own processor, its own RAM, and other components, and it has a big job of issuing IP addresses to all of the clients on the network. It may have security features that, of course, is going to control routing, and some of them have firewalls and, and other features. Now, many routers that you can find on the consumer market are wide open to a, an attack from an ICMP echo flood or a ping of doom. Okay, I'm only going to get techie for a few seconds. An ICMP echo request or a ping is a packet sent from one machine to another machine to see if there's a connection there and also the response time. Now the whole point of a ping flood, ping of doom, or an ICMP echo request flood, whatever you call it, they're really old attacks. These have been around since I was in high school in the 90s and they were kind of a cool thing back then, but they were never complicated. The whole point on this attack is to overload your router. If you can successfully cause the router CPU to become overheated, most of these are passively cooled, they don't have fans. So if they heat up too much, the router often has a fail safe which causes it to reboot. Another thing they can try to do is overload the RAM. So basically it overloads the router and causes it to lose connection. That's the whole point of a denial of service attack is to cut you off from your service. Now this might seem like just a minor annoyance. You got knocked offline, got back on. But what if the attacker has your IP address and they're harassing you with these attacks and knocking you offline every time you try to get on? Now to remedy this problem, we gotta do two things. We gotta find out if your router is vulnerable. If it is vulnerable, then we have to see if we can remedy the problem at the router level or if it has to be replaced. Now the typical IT way of testing if your router is vulnerable to this attack would be to take a laptop outside the network and then try to ping into the IP address of your home network. Well, there's an easier way to do that. You can go to the link in description here at GRC Research and we're gonna do a test from this website. It's going to test us for a, these vulnerabilities as well as a lot and tell us if we have to change anything on our router. Once we get to this website, we'll click proceed. And this free service is called Shields Up. Now we have several tests here. We have a UPnP exposure test, file sharing, common ports, all service ports, browser headers, all these different things that test for different vulnerabilities in a router. Okay, hold it. You might be asking, why are there so many tests and why are they necessary for a home router? Well, the answer is it's because your home network on average is scanned about 3,000 times a week by potential hackers. Now this yellow button here is UPnP or Universal Plug and Play. That's a feature of a lot of consumer routers which is convenient. It allows the router to be automatically configured to open ports or enable services by another computer. Such as when you install something on a computer and you want it to be able to configure the router automatically. But that's a major vulnerability and you see that go away on a lot of brands of, of routers but not all. So it's good to check that one. We have a lot of other things we can check but today we're going to check common ports. Now you can see my IP address here. That's actually my VPN IP address because I don't want to be attacked. You guys should all be on VPN. Right now, big tech is collecting data on everything you do online and building a profile on you for financial gain and you don't see a penny of it. Take back your privacy and take back control over your connected life by using a reliable VPN. Unsecure websites and public Wi-Fi are the easiest ways hackers can wreak havoc in your lives. But if you have NordVPN with this military-grade encryption, lightning-fast speed, and over 5,000 servers worldwide, you can browse safely and privately. NordVPN also has state-of-the-art, dedicated peer-to-peer -peer servers to protect your usage from your ISP, as well as Big Brother and with 
with advanced obfuscation servers, you can access blocked websites or even streaming services such as Netflix, Hulu, and more anywhere in the world. NordVPN has a strict no-logs policy and has never and will never be pressured by governments. Take back your privacy today and use my exclusive link in the description to get a huge discount on NordVPN. Stay safe. Okay, so on my results, I have a failure here. It says failed. The failure, we've passed unsolicited packets, TCP packets, but ping reply, this is what we were talking about, or an echo request. Your system replied to our ping or ICMP echo request, making it visible on the internet. So we can tell right now that this router is vulnerable. Now, if your router came up as passed, well, then you don't actually have to do anything. You're good. Congratulations. However, if you did come up with a failure and it's an ICMP echo request, then we're going to have to change that in your router if possible. Now, I've included a couple of links on how to change this in your router, but it really varies based upon which router you have. You may have to do a Google search as to how to do this on your specific router. For example, you may be Google searching how to disable ICMP echo request Netgear routers. And so this will be the way you'll do it. But if you're going to do it on a firewall, there's some basic principles you can deploy. Now, if you know your way around your router settings and you also know a thing about firewalls, then you'll be able to do this pretty easily. Go into your router settings. You might not have this router, but I'm going to go into my network settings and I'm going to go to the firewall section. Like I said, it'll vary depending on which router you have. And once I'm in the firewall, the part that we want to change is on the WAN in. And I know you typically don't mess with the WAN firewall settings, but you can if you do it this way. I'm going to create a new rule and I'm going to label it drop ICMP echo. And we're doing this on the WAN. Doing it on the LAN is really defeating the purpose. It could protect servers you have on the network, but we're trying to protect the router. And you have three options here as to what it's going to do. It could drop, reject, or accept these requests. We don't want to reject, even though that sounds like a good idea. Um, you don't want to advertise to anyone scanning your network or the person trying to DDoS you that the connection's there. The best defense is to not even be there according to scans. You want to stealth yourself. So we're going to drop this and we're going to select ICMP and we're going to have it any protocol. Typically we would want to do TCP, but we'll keep both of them. And it's gonna be from any address group, so any IP address on the internet trying to send an ICMP through the WAM. We're going to drop it. And destination, we're gonna do any address port group. So it's going to drop everything. Then we'll save it. And now I have drop ICMP echo. Now the reason that we selected drop instead of reject or accept was because obviously we don't want to accept the communication because it's already doing that. And we don't want to reject it because that sends a message to the attacker that, hey, I'm here, but I'm blocking this communication. That's just going to advertise to everyone else that you're there. Anyone scanning your network is going to see that you have an active connection and you don't want that because they're going to find some other vulnerability. It just takes a matter of time dropping is going to send a message back automatically that there's no connection there. Same thing if you try to communicate with a website that's no longer there. It's the same thing when the connection is dropped. So that's the way we're going to stealth this. Now, if you don't have firewall settings or anything that can be changed in this router, you may need to replace it if you're getting DDoSed. Now, if you do have these settings, but they're too complicated for you, you may want to call in a professional to do it for you, which would be a pretty easy fix. And if they are not ripping you off, it shouldn't cost too much. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you like it, please click like and consider subscribing. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and I'll see you next time.